Thank you for joining us for tonight's Folks Being Alive presentation. In addition to tonight's broadcast, all of our episodes are archived at nytf.org. Please help us spread the word about our series by sharing with your social networks. Also, if you're able, please do consider a donation to the National Yiddish Theater Volksbühne. Your support, no matter how small or large, enables us to continue our mission of producing and presenting and preserving Yiddish culture. Ashenim Dank. Thank you. Shalom Aleichem, lieber Freund. Ich heiße Mottel Dittner. Und das ist 15 Minuten Jiddisch. Mehr weniger. Von der Nationaler Jiddisch Theater Volksbühne. Jede Woche bringen wir euch eine Mini-Lektion in Jiddisch Sprach und Kultur. Welcome back to 15 Minute Yiddish. If you missed any of our past episodes, Daigenisht, you can watch them online at nytf.org. Well, here we are at episode 7. Who would have thought that in only six short episodes we would have the beginnings of a pretty good shmois, a conversation? Let's review what we've learned so far. We can greet one another. We can introduce ourselves and ask other people for their name. We can ask and answer the question, how are you? If the news is good, we can congratulate each other. If the news is not so good, we can empathize with one another and ask further questions to find out what's wrong. We can quetch about our aches and pains and make a couple of jokes along the way. We can talk about where we live. And not only can we talk about ourselves, we can talk about our mishpocha as well. Yasher koyach ale. Job well done. Let's start this week with a quick review of our previous episode. Wayne, please remind us in very great detail. Wo wohnst du? Ich wohne in Stadt New York, in Stoat New York, in Gegend Kew Gardens, Queens, in Adire. Gut. Wohnst du mit dein Mischbocher? Nein. Du wohnst allein? Nein. Ich wohne mit, uh, how do you say, a friend? I'm glad you asked. We have two ways to say it, and this introduces an interesting feature of Yiddish and a topic for discussion. In Yiddish, we know that nouns have gender. What do we do when the gender of the noun is in disagreement with the person who is the subject of our sentence? I think I understand what you're getting at, darling, but what a confusing way to phrase the question. I know, but I couldn't think of a better way to phrase it. Uh, let's just look at an example. In Yiddish, we have two different words that we can use for a friend. Der Freund, which comes to us from German. Der Haver, which comes to us from Hebrew. But these are both masculine nouns. What if we're talking about a female friend? We can feminize these nouns by changing the article to a D and adding an ending. So we get die Freundine and die Haverte. Typical endings to feminize a masculine noun are Ine, Te, and Ke. And how do you masculinize a feminine noun? Well, here's the thing. We don't have to masculinize feminine nouns because all of these words like friend and neighbor, and as we'll see later on today, uh, doctor and teacher and writer, they're all based on old assumptions and they're all masculine already. Well, that hardly seems right in this day and age. I agree. Languages are living things that evolve to reflect the values of its speakers, but 
In order to make these changes, it usually takes popular usage in both spoken and written form as well as mass media, and ultimately the acceptance by authoritative sources like dictionaries. That change has not come to Yiddish yet, but as the Yiddish tent grows, perhaps the momentum will grow as well. Derweil, in the meantime, I'll make you a deal. I will give you the classical masculine and feminine versions of these nouns, just so you know them. And you use whichever version of it you like. And if you want, you can even mix and match the articles. When I started learning Yiddish, I was told pretty early on that anytime you open your mouth to speak a Yiddish word, there's a 70% chance that you're going to be corrected. Well, I promise you that if you were to say di chaver or di freind, I will understand your intention and I will not correct you. Is that okay, Sophia? Derweil, I suppose it will have to do. Adank. So, we've got der Freund and der Haver. We've got die Freundine and die Haverte. The plural is the same whether the subjects are masculine or feminine. We've got die Freund. Notice that the final letter switches from a D or a Dalid to a T or a Tess. That's the first time we've seen that indicator of a plural. And we've got die Haverim. Notice that the vowel changes from an E to an A, and the stress moves from the first syllable to the second syllable. Nu, wein, mit wem in du? Ich voi mit der Haver. Er heist Gary. Sehr gut. Mir voided leben meine Tate Mame und seid Schwester. Sie heist Gloria. Sei mir Meuchel. I didn't mean to cut you off. Ich bin dir Meuchel. Be avoided weit for my brother. Er heist Mike. Er voit in Stadt New Mexico, in Stout Albuquerque, in Ahoys. Sehr gut. Today we're going to talk about activities and occupations, which means there's going to be tons of verbs. But don't worry, they are regular verbs. And by now, you are an expert at conjugating regular verbs. So we're not going to stop and conjugate these verbs together. But we will do a quick review of the verb ton, to do, which is semi-regular. Wait, what happened to verb time? Yes, I think we all rather enjoy seeing the various celebrations that accompany our words of action. No, good. So sein verb time. Since we've already learned the verb ton, let's skip straight to alle zusammen. Ich tu. Du tust. Er sie es tut. Mir Tuen, ihr tut, sei tuen, sehr, sehr gut. When we last looked at the verb ton, it was in the context of es tut mir weh. Today we're going to look at this verb in the context of activities. If you want to ask somebody, what are you doing? We say, vos tust du, in the singular informal, and vos tut ihr, in the plural or the singular formal. Let's take a look at some Aktivitäten. Lernen sich is to study. We learned about the reflexive sich in a previous episode. This is the second verb that we're learning that pairs with the reflexive sich. There's a couple others coming up. Lernen all by itself means to teach or very specifically to study Torah. Lernen is to read. Lehen in a book, to read a book. Lehen in a Zeitung, to read a newspaper. Schreiben, to write. Obruen sich. Again, we have a verb that pairs with a reflexive sich. But there's something else tricky here. The op in obruen is what we call a separable prefix. When we use it in its conjugated form, it flies off down to the end of the sentence. 
Ich ruhe sich ab. Gucken euch a Film. To look at a film. To watch a movie. Gucken euch Televisia. To look at television. Gucken euch der Internet. To look at the Internet. Essen. To eat. Kochen. To cook. Zuhören sich zu Musik. This is a very tricky one. Again, we've got the reflexive sich, but we've also got a separable prefix in zuhören. When we use this in a sentence, it flies off down to the end of the clause. Ich hör sich zu, zu Musik. Spazieren, to go for a walk. Läufen, to run. Was tun sie? Sie essen. Sehr gut. Was tut sie? Sie zuhört sich zu Musik. Nicht gerecht. Remember, zuhören is one of those verbs that has the separable prefix. Sie hört sich zu, zu Musik. Sie hört sich zu, zu Musik. Sehr gut. Was tut Jack Lemon? Who's Jack Lemon? Was tut der Mann in the picture? Oh, er leint. Gut. Und was leint er? Er leint a Zeitung. Sehr gut. Was tut das Ketzele? Das Ketzele ruht sich ab. Gut. Und was tun sie? Sie kochen. Ausgezeichnet. Outstanding. So let's take a look at doing things in terms of an occupation. The Yiddish word for a job or work is Arbet. To ask somebody, what do you do for work? You would ask, was tust du bei Arbet? Singular informal. Or was tut ihr bei Arbet? Plural or singular formal. We also have a word Parnosse. It means a living or an occupation. To ask somebody, what do you do for a living? You can ask, Vos is dein Parnosse? Singular informal. Or Vos is eier Parnosse? Plural or singular formal. To answer, you would say, Ich bin a or Ich bin an, followed by the name of your job. Let's take a look at some occupations. Just a quick note, many of these are traditional jobs that Jewish people have done, and many of them have been done only by men historically or only by women. In these cases, I'm only going to give you the masculine or the feminine versions, but remember that you can feminize any masculine noun by adding the ending in, ke, or te. Let's take a look. Der Arbeiter, die Arbeiters. This is a worker in the sense of a physical laborer. A craftsperson, der Balmeloche, die Balmeloches. A tailor, der Schneider, die Schneiders. A seamstress, die Näterin, die Näterins. A shoemaker, Der Schuster, die Schusters. A Smith, der Schmied, die Schmieden. A Wagon Driver, der Balagolle, die Balagoles. Teacher, this is interesting. Whereas the masculine is der Lehrer and die Lehrers, we have two feminized versions which are used quite interchangeably. You'll hear both die Lehrerin, die Lehrerins. You'll also hear die Lehrerke, die Lehrerkes. Students. Masculine, der Student, die Studenten, die Studentke, die Studentkes. Now, if the school we're talking about is a traditional Jewish religious day school, then the teacher is called Der Malamid, 
plural, the malamdim. A student is der Talmud, plural, the Talmidim. Der Holzhecker, the Holzheckers, this is a woodcutter. A porter is der Troger, singular, the Treger in the plural. There were both male and female peddlers. You'll hear der Peddler, the Peddlers, and the feminized the Peddlerke. The peddler kes. The same is true with storekeepers. Der kremer, or die kremers, masculine, and the feminine, die kremerke, die kremerkes. There are two different names for a tavern keeper or an innkeep. Der kretschmer, die kretschmers, and there is also der schenker and die schenkers. A kosher Slaughterer is der Schechter, and the plural is die Schochtim. A kosher butcher is der Katsef, and the plural is die Katsovim. There were both male and female bakers. The masculine is der Becker, die Beckers, and the feminine is die Beckerin, die Beckerins. This one is interesting. Der Luftmensch, or die Luftmenschen, literally an air person. This is somebody who doesn't have any specific occupation or job, but somehow manages to make a living. A rabbi is der Rav in the singular, die Rabbonim in the plural, but a rabbi is addressed as Rebbe. A female rabbi is a Historically, fairly new thing, and we follow the Hebrew, the rabbe for the singular, the rabes for the plural. A cantor is the chazen, or the chazonim in the plural. Female cantors have been around for a while longer. They're referred to as the chazente in the singular, the chazentes in the plural. Business people. In the masculine, der Soicher, singular, the Sochrim in the plural, and in the feminine, the Soicherin and the Soicherins. A doctor, in the masculine, der Doktor, in the plural, die Doktorim. The feminine, die Doktorke, in the plural, die Doktorkes. This one is also interesting. Die Krankenschwester is a nurse. Kranken means sick people, and Schwester means sister. So why would we refer to a nurse as a sister? Well, if you look in the picture, uh, it shows us historically, very often, nurses in hospitals were Catholic nuns who are referred to as sister. Lawyers, masculine, der Advokat, die Advokaten. In the feminine, die Advokatke, the Advokatkes. A college professor. Der Professor, masculine singular. The Professoren in the plural. And in the feminine version, the Professorke, singular. The Professorkes in the plural. An engineer. Masculine, der Ingenieur. The Ingenieren. And in the feminized version, the engineerin and the engineerins. An artist. Der Kinsler, masculine singular. Die Kinslers in the plural. In the feminine, die Kinslerin in the singular. Die Kinslerins in the plural. Actors. Der Akteur, masculine singular. Die Akteurin, plural. In the feminine, Die Actrice, singular. Die Actrices, plural. Writers, in the masculine. Der Schreiber, die Schreibers. And in the feminine, die Schreiberin, die Schreiberins. Let's schmuiss. We'll start out with an easy one. Professor, was ist eure Pagnose? Ich bin a professor. Good. Scott, was tust du bei Arbeit? 
Ich bin a student. Gut. Sophia, was ist dein Parnasse? How would one say a professional celebrity? Hmm. We don't exactly have a word for that. How about a professioneller barimter mensch? Doesn't quite roll off the tongue now, does it, darling? Ich bin a professioneller barimter mensch. I see what you mean. Murray, was tust du bei Arbeit? You know, I make with a hahas. Ich bin a comedian. Oh, that's an easy one. We say a comediant. Ich bin a comediant. Sehr gut. Wayne, was tust du bei Arbeit? Ich bin a Luftmensch. Hinde, was tust du bei Arbeit? I'm retired. Oh, you can say, ich bin pensioniert. I'm retired. But let's pretend that I'm asking you before you are retired. Hinde, was tust du bei Arbeit? Okay, how do I say air traffic controller? How about aeroplan traffic controller? Or if you want to feminize it, controllerke. Ich bin an aeroplan traffic controllerke. Yasha koyach alle. Join us for our next episode when we talk about Essen, food. Zeit gesund. Hey, Mottl, I got a good joke about a job. I was counting on that. This joke comes from the great Menashe Skolnik. I'm not going to talk like him, though, because I'm not an impressionist. I have a job in a factory for 30 dollars a week. And I have a job because the foreman has not been able to do it. You know what this is? A foreman. A foreman is a zamin mensch was er alleen arbeit nicht. Er guckt nur an, as alle andere sollen arbeiten. Aber der foreman is mir mechanik gewesen, weil alle haben gemeint, as ich bin der foreman. You had to think about that one for a minute, huh? <laughs>